Fly me to the Philippines. How to meet your perfect Filipina and start your new life. I have a story to tell. Before I met you, I was married for 27 years. And when I got divorced 13 years ago, I didn't know what I didn't know. I was really, really unprepared to venture out into the world of dating, into online dating, dating in person. I was all thumbs, mm -hmm. and I think I made a lot of mistakes. But something happened early on. Um, the biggest mistake I always made was women, I would buy expensive dinners, and women would ask me, you know what they asked me? Tell me what they asked me. What happened to your marriage? What happened to my marriage? And you know, Chrissy, <laughs> The right answer is for the sake of my soul, I moved on. And children deserve happy parents, not married parents. Mm -hmm. 30 minutes later, I was still going on and on and on. And it was such a turnoff. And whether you're online or in person, that's a huge dating mistake. And we've got a whole video on it, just a short little video on it about the number one date mistake. But what happened, Chrissy, was I went out on a date with this woman named Julie. She was quite beautiful and I was attracted to her. And she asked me what happened in my marriage and I went blah, 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 blah. Mm -hmm. But we were friendly and we actually went out on six dates and you know, somehow I got moved into the friend zone. <laughs> and uh, it was uh, you know, kind of devastating and I was so inexperienced it was likely to happen. But I turned to her into a dating coach. Have you ever had really? uh, have you ever had uh, someone of the opposite sex that you could turn to to try and decipher and get the riddle out of the opposite sex and figure out what the heck is going on? Mm -hmm. um, I I don't have any experience like that because I just planned and uh, you know about dating I'm not too open with other people but I think it would be better if you have someone that can help you with their thoughts about dating. Yeah, so Julie, uh, she was in a similar situation. She didn't, you know, men are from Mars, women are from Venus. She couldn't make heads or tails. She was recently divorced. I was recently divorced. We both had uh, no game. And she would share with me the profiles and the, what the men would say and why they were saying it and the mm -hmm. lies they were telling her. And she was always shooting high for really handsome men that were very stylish. And they were so full of BS half the time. And I was you know, aiming high too. And she, she would look at the profiles of the women and the convert text messages we're sending. And I'd sometimes call her from the bathroom at the restaurant and I would say, Julie, um, like, what do you make of this? I can't figure it out, or I'm bored, or I, what should I do? How do I get out of here? So I had like a dating coach. It was kind of uh, interesting. Okay, so you became like the dating coaches of each other. Right, she was my dating coach and I was her dating coach. And like, before I got into a long-term relationship, we had hundreds and hundreds of messages to each other. And you know, she had men who were misleading her, who were uh, two-timing her. She had was dating a man who was dating another woman simultaneously and I helped her find it. And she, you know, I guess what it comes down to is other people can see our blind spots. Mm -hmm. Don't you think that's kind of true? Um, yes, I, it's kind of true. Like I observe other people that who are so much in love with the person, and they just can't see red flags or any other negative from the partner because they're too much in love. Right. But the other people can see it. Yeah, sometimes your best friends, you know, they they don't want to tell you that your that relationship's not good mm -hmm. for you or that relationship's toxic. You can't see it yourself. You have a blind spot. Mm -hmm. So having a dating coach was like awesome. But uh, so that's just a story I wanted to share with you. And um, I wonder how they did not end up together. Are you a unicorn, Chrissy? Are you the only Filipina? That, um, I just got lucky and everyone else out there is just determined to fail? Of course not. There's a lot of Filipinas. You just have need the skills and the plan for you to find them. Can you make your way from where you are now finding out about the Philippines on YouTube, wanting to know how to meet a beautiful Filipina, wanting to know how to stretch your pension, how to succeed, that girlfriend experience, that old school girlfriend experience with a young woman mm -hmm. uh, here in Asia, and they really are tempted to get started. And I think there's two types of men, Chrissy. There's the type of men who are just not gonna venture to the Philippines until they meet their unicorn, until that girl jumps off the page. And then there's the other type of man who says, I can see it. There's enough proof mm -hmm. for me to understand that I'm 
a strong enough candidate to succeed, I'm going to go online, maybe 30, 45 days before my flight, I'm going to fly to the Philippines whether I succeed or whether I don't succeed. I'm going to try and generate some prospects. If I don't succeed, I'll have my online tools and I'm going to go make it happen or at least I'm going to try my hardest and give it my all. Those the two types of men. Do you think one type is going to be more successful than the other? Well, the one that is very optimistic and want to take an action, they are the they are the person that has the high possibility to succeed in the future. Chrissy, I have to admit, I think I was the other type because that's why I gave up six years ago when I got scammed after a month, and then I gave up again during COVID, and I spent wasted two months with a woman who it turned out was engaged. But the thing is, you always try again after giving up. What do you think is the reason so many men go sideways? Number one is fear, you know. They have this fear not to succeed. They have this fear that they don't know how to do it and nobody will like them. Mm. You know, in a perfect world, Chrissy, all the people watching would have an older sibling who maybe five years earlier yeah. achieved this. Uh, like if I had a younger brother, he could call me up and he could talk to you and say, Chrissy, mm -hmm. I'm talking to this Filipina. She's talking nonsense. She needs money. She's saying these things. I see these social media posts. Is this really her cousin? And you <laughs> could you could kind of like take a look and you could be his dating coach or I could help and I could tell him yeah. where to live in the Philippines and what things cost. But very, very few mm -hmm. are fortunate enough to have yeah. that resource. And so what do they have? They have these virtual friendships on YouTube. YouTube. We do some training, we do some education, occasionally we do some <laughs> preaching. Uh, but primarily, we uh, showcase our lifestyle. Sharing. And we try and uh, inspire by example mm -hmm. and let people see what's possible. If someone decides to go ahead and get started, can a 75-year-old man meet a 30-year-old woman like yourself? Yes, it's a possibility if you try. Uh, there's nothing that's holding that person back in your mind? Oh, uh, nothing. If you really desire to do it, Nothing can hold you back. So he shouldn't look for somebody 40 or 50 years old? It's up to him. Um, if he, he feels good about dating younger Filipinas mm. and he will be lucky to find one, then he could date a younger Filipina. But if he, if he doesn't feel like it, like he wanted to be dating with a Filipina in their 40s, there's a lot of Filipinas in 40s that are, that are also looking for men. What do you say to those men who've been deceived once or twice already and they're getting discouraged or they're not sure if they should even start because they hear these stories about all the scammers? There are a lot of things that could discourage you when it comes to failure, you know, because it happens. Like there's a lot of um, people that were scammed. There's a lot of people that have really a very sad experience of dating here in the Philippines or even in uh, some other countries in Asia. But if those discouragement w will hold you back and then you will let yourself to be held, then there will be no success that is waiting for you. A little bit like the lottery, you have to play to win. Yes. So if you give up, there's your chances of success are zero. <laughs> yes, we have, a, we have the sayings here in the Philippines, as long as we have life, there's still hope. So I think that a lot of men go sideways. They, uh, they don't have a sales background. They're, they're, they don't mm -hmm. like to dial for dollars. Do you think when a person logs on to a website that uh, the first 200 people who write to him or say, can you call me on WhatsApp? Mm. Do you think any of those are legitimate? Yes. A couple. Yeah, it, I'm, a, I'm a proof of a real Filipina who asked right away for WhatsApp. Cause but you didn't write to me. I didn't write to you. Do you think that real Filipinos are right? Like, hey, George, you're a good looking guy. Um, no. No. But I'm going to tell that there are also like real Filipinas, real person out there that they will right do you think there's three or five real filipinas in there that are aggressive enough that they would write you you wouldn't write you'd send a like maybe at most yes um because filipinas also have different um views and thoughts about dating online there are also aggressive filipinas that they are very desperate to find someone mm. so maybe they will right. make the first move but <clears throat> not not very unlikely because we want to show our nature of being modest and um, we would li we are like to be pursued not us pursuing someone right should more traditional yeah they should pay attention to the likes or the hearts that they get because mm -hmm. that could happen 
Yes. That's something you would do? They have to pay attention for the features of the body and of the face. If it's um, too good to be true, like a model, um, you have to be aware of that. Right. Filters. Filters. Um, maybe um, you should get uh, those Filipinas who are, their pictures is like more realistic, like they're in the kitchen or they're playing or they're in the group of people, they're in their, with their workmates, something like that. Yeah. Well, I always say that, you know, you should pursue, pursue women with three or more photos who've mm -hmm. been active within seven days. Uh, so once you do that first sift, sort, and condense, and once you generate some personalized outbound touches, uh, you have to go and do it again and again and again, and you have to keep sending out those letters for women with three or more photos active within seven days. What are you looking for when you see a man's profile? What, what is it that gives you confidence that maybe he's real? Um, when he put an effort on writing about his bio and uh, inf information and also a very calm introduction of self. Mm. No, not too aggressive. It's not pleasing. When I dated in the West and someone said these are my deal breakers in their profile I was like yes, eh, yes. I don't want any part of that I think when you're writing your profile I mean your your um, description about yourself um, this is very important there are some times that when you write a passage the person the reader will read it in a different tone compared to you're going to tell it with them you using your 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 voice your your real voice because sometimes you wrote it very calmly but they will read it very aggressively mm. so it will send a different message so be careful how you you don't want to put your your deal breakers in your yes. profile and you don't want to oversell yourself either yes okay yeah so i think um just enough for her to have a a overview right. about your life and your profile and um, the Filipina that is real that really want to know you will want to talk to you on video right on video and that's a big let's talk about this because I think the cardinal rule that um, should never be broken mm -hmm. um, is uh, you must have extensive video chat pretty early on after the third or fourth text or letter back and forth you need to switch to video chat and not one time for five minutes but uh, you know 30 minute long video chats 20 minute long video chats sometimes twice a day um, and until you have had three four seven nine video chats you should make no assumptions that you're in a relationship or that you're the special one or that she's the you know juggling and you've risen to the top yeah and what we've come into con, we, you know, we've been meeting people who, for some reason, uh, the Filipina has some extraordinary excuse. For not or video chatting. For not video chatting. Or sometimes the men have recently started dating and mm -hmm. they're 70 years old and they're just uncomfortable. They feel like they're too old. They don't really want to be on video. They feel they'll present themselves better in writing. You would agree, like a man that doesn't want to video chat will be prone for scammers. So scamming. And, and scamming, yeah. yeah. When I uh, went online for the second time during COVID, I spent two months chatting a girl that I wasn't really initially attracted to, but she started to win my heart in terms of friendship. Mm -hmm. And after two months, I've told this story before, I found her mother's Facebook page, and on her mother's Facebook page was an engagement ceremony. She spent two weeks shacked up with a guy. She was engaged, and she, he was in a different time zone, and she was chatting me for like three hours a day, but she was chatting him for an hour a day for all two months, and I wasted two months I totally wish she never asked for money yeah what did I do wrong Chrissy um, actually you did not do wrong actually because the the X factor there is not in you but from her you know because she's juggling with two person she's juggling between you and um, her fiance and maybe she's thinking that her fiance doesn't have the qualities that you have and she might go to you instead of him but of course she's being turned to to she's being dishonest with me to both of you the other guy and right, you she right. was being dishonest so she is um, for me she she will be considered as selfish because she just think of um, her um, of the benefits that she can get 
by talking to two men. Here's what you I, have two options. So here's what I think I did wrong. I settled. I had a need to have list and this girl didn't meet my needs to have. She wasn't like you. You just consider you just consider the stuff that she doesn't have. So what happened was she gave a lot of friendship. She had a lot of enthusiasm. She liked me and she didn't quite meet the characteristics that I was looking for, but I'd been running into uh, obstacles. I'd been running into obstacles and I settled. You settled in. I settled in and I did a proof of her Facebook pages. I looked and see if I could find any fishy business. I did the Facebook investigation, mm -hmm. open source investigation. I Googled her name, I looked up her Instagram. I didn't see anything, but I wasn't in love with her, so I only gave it a little bit of effort. And yeah. six weeks later, I started to get affection and feelings for the girl because I kind of settled in. It became convenient. It became so convenient. Yeah. That's what I did wrong. I settled for, what I was so looking convenient. for was, I was looking for a diamond and I found a ruby and I just settled and boom. <laughs> and what, but if I had found a diamond, I, don't, I would have had such strong feelings that I would have done my investigations much more thoroughly. I would have looked into it much more thoroughly to make sure that I really had a diamond and I would have mm -hmm. felt really strongly about it. But I was kind of lazy and I think that's the mistake men make. Because you have a fear also, I think. That's why you settled with the convenience that she's giving you because you have the fear that if you're going to let her go, you can't find someone. Possibly. I think that is like the common fear of these people. That's why they can't let go of the woman, even if there's already a lot of red flags. But what I did was I was initiating outbound letters. I was initiating outbound letters. I sent her one, she responded. I stopped sending letters. First eight weeks I sent, I did no marketing. I did no advertising, I did no sales. I, I knocked on no doors, I dialed for no dollars. I just let her chat me up an hour and a half every morning, fluff up my ego, mm -hmm. make me think she was an off, a very, you know, her English was great. She was very interesting to talk to. It was COVID, you know, we're all lonely. But I stopped yes. pursuing what I was actually looking for. Mm -hmm. And when I finally got around to taking a deep dive on open source investigation, I found out, poof, there it was. And I wait, and then I got discouraged and disillusioned and I quit for two years. You know what, I think the worst thing could happen when you ended up together, mm. but you, she didn't really meet the need to have yeah. that you're listing. And then one day you will find someone that meets all those yes. lists. Yes. You might end up cheating on her. I'd hate to bump into the love of my life after having met a long-term girlfriend yeah. you know what other big mistakes are men making that's i think that maybe the biggest mistake is they just are waiting and waiting they won't pull the trigger yeah they either won't go online and get serious or they won't buy an airplane ticket and get serious they're just watching and watching and watching and watching and waiting and yes. life is passing by i think one of the mistake is um when you develop your doubt then developing your courage mm. you know you have the doubt your doubt is greater than your courage mm. so <clears throat> that is um that is a situation that cannot make you move what are the chances that if a man meets a filipina online and they're getting along really well yeah and she's not asking for any money and they're, they're talking for three weeks or four weeks what are the mm -hmm. chances that she's not talking to other men if she's an attractive eligible filipina um, I think the way she treats you will tell, like, um, like, like what I said, a woman could lie, but her actions cannot. Mm. I was totally fooled for, for eight weeks. I, uh, it was only because I was developing stronger feelings because that I decided to Because it was covered by a shadow. A shadow? <laughs> what, what do you like, mean? It was covered What's by that? There is a, there is a, there is a, a, a black portion of uh, the relationship that you cannot see, but the other people can. So that's, okay, so when I had a dating coach, my friend Julie, yeah. she'd have seen it right away. Yeah. So if you have somebody that you can share your doubts and somebody that yeah. you can share your um, inhibitions, your anxieties, your fears, maybe they can see something in this relationship that you can't see. Maybe if they're sending you 
property listings before you ever arrive in the Philippines, your friend might say, that's a, a red, red flag. flag. But yes. you might just think it's normal. Because you're blinded by blinded. Your, your feelings towards her. OK. Yeah. So it would be good to have someone that you could bounce these things yeah, off Yeah, it of. is like um, someone you can um, ask for help right. and um, ask, I mean, help you evaluate um, your relationship with this woman and help you see the dark side of the woman that clearly you can't see because you are in love. But you know, the way, uh, the way I recall it is when people get so excited, oh, I've met this person, I've met this person, she's so perfect, she's so perfect, we're gonna buy a house when I move to the Philippines. And then your friend says, what? And you, you no, 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 and, you just, and your friend's sitting there going, ah, I don't think this, I shouldn't dip my toe into this, he's too excited, he's too worked up, I don't think he's gonna listen to me anyway. Yeah. Sometimes so. you can't get your friends to tell you what they think. Yeah. Let's say that it's safe to assume that she's a beautiful woman, she's highly desirable. You're not the only one can see that she's a catch. You can't get to the Philippines for six months. Should you send money even though she doesn't ask for it? Is that going to help hold her in place? <clears throat> so, you know, in every single action that you're going to make, there's always a positive and negative side. Mm. So when you send money, it will show her your, um, s your sincerity and your affection towards her. Because I'm going to make this as an example. If there's a couple and both of them are making money in the house, like me, I'm making money in the house, but still my husband will, you know, give me a gift or give me money for something so that I can go on shopping, it's very romantic because he know that I can provide for myself, but it's not the money, but it's the, the affection that you wow. are showing through the money. Right. And in long distance relationship, it's very hard to show sincerity because there are a lot of people that will fake their sincerity to other people online. So money is something that is very risky to invest in a relationship, but if one person will do that, he will show the other person his sincerity, that he's willing to take the risk. Okay, so as a rule, a golden rule, mm -hmm. never send money, never, never send yes. money. However, you're saying... There's an exemption. If you can't get to the Philippines quick, yep. and if you can't have that chemistry face-to-face -face and meet her family and get to a place where you feel cemented in this relationship, that a small gesture might be seen as um, a yes. sense of commitment. Yes, but always remember that you will only do that when you already had investigated her and what do you call that? Um, you already filtered everything about her mm. and uh, yourself already believe that she's the one and she's uh, faithful towards right. you. I mean, before you get serious you have to do open source investigations which is looking into their facebook pages mm -hmm. their uh, whatsapp page are they twerking on uh, TikTok? Um, when the, you google their name uh, university id sharing a cinemar proof of no marriage document is only eight dollars it could be done um, and uh, you know a real passport uh, there's other things that you can get from her to prove her identity yeah and r research you can do without tipping her off that you're suspicious as you follow your heart but trust but verify yeah I mean if, if the proof is uh, very strong to prove that she's real you can do that like yeah. you can send her gifts or a little amount of money even if she's working if you can't get to the, if you can get to the Philippines. If you cannot, yeah. if you cannot get here in the Philippines for many months or if, years. So if you can't get here for 12 months, what are the chances another Western man's gonna come along or he's gonna show up in the Philippines and wanna take her out on a date and snatch her from you? <laughs> even online, even, even in person, online. even online, the woman can go online, right, you know, right. she will be tempted to go online, especially yeah. if, um, you're not planning to come here. Yeah. But once you are like supporting her, it is something that can hold her from doing that. Mm. Like if the real Filipina is, um, she has, um, she's real and um, you know, she's pure in heart. Um, 
She will think about it. I don't know if I agree. I'm, what do you guys think? I, what's the answer? That I think if she sees you uh, with love mm -hmm. and not just as a financial resource, not sending money and telling her you don't want to be in a relationship that revolves around money, she managed to survive before you showed up. Mm -hmm. If she's going to jump at another man or jump at a man that shows up in person, she should go jump at him. If 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 a hundred or two hundred dollars a month would make the difference, I'm not sure I want to be sending that money. What do you guys think? I think we would both agree that if a Filipina hints at or asks for money, yeah, one hundred percent don't send the money, right? Yes. I think what I think what you're saying is if you fall in love and you do all your open uh, source research and you, mm -hmm. she texts you from work, she video chats you from the hospital, if she's a nurse, she's with her family and she introduces you to her mother and her brothers and you are just having yes. this love affair and you you wanna give her $100 for tuition or something without her asking, without her hinting, that's sort of what you're saying. Yeah, it is a good sign also that um, she's introducing you to her family, to her friends, to her workmates because um, it, it is a sign that she's um, sincere yeah, with yeah. you, and she's not going to <laughs> she's not going to talk with the other man right. because she's showing you to the to her world. Right. So, just to go back, I I think the biggest mistake that I made in the past, and I think the biggest mistake that a lot of our viewers make is they get approached or they get responses to some of their outbound emails, and a person doesn't quite fit the list, doesn't quite meet the standard that they're searching for, but they give a lot of friendship. And, you know, after strikeout and strikeout and strikeout, you meet a woman and she's like available for chatting and she's laughing at your jokes and she's telling you you're so handsome <laughs> and she's available to talk to you twice a day and you just shut it down. Uh, you know, I told you about the time where uh, the woman told me she took her profile down, and yeah. I was like, wow, I, I guess we're going steady. But the next day I did a search, and she showed up with, uh, uh, she was a year older, and, uh, you Other know, account. same photo, new account, year older. And pff, so, she, you know, they, they'll tell you, you know, you, so you end up taking your your profile down, but they create, mm -hmm. a, they go to Pinoy Love, they go to Christian Filipina, they go to Tinder, they, go, they just go to another <laughs> dating site. But you, you end up shutting the whole thing down. And that's a problem. I think I think the problem is settling mm -hmm. and shutting it down and not really shaking all the opportunities out. The, oppor it's, the opportunities are there, but you're you're being approached by the unreliable people. They're coming at you. They're coming at you. And you could send emails out to people, and they're already talking to other foreigners. They're already receiving money from other foreigners <sighs> sometimes, right? Yeah. And then you know they're just interested in having a second or third foreigner, and they're going to tell you whatever you want to hear to string you along. So how do men, I think the right answer, Chrissy, is get on that airplane and come to the Philippines and see for yourself. If, this, if she's real. Yeah, it's very doable, but along the way, you're gonna face some challenges and you're gonna face some obstacles and you could be deceived, you could be frustrated. Uh, mm -hmm. It's not simple, it requires patience, 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 and a little degree of luck. Because you might be online a day, you might be online three months. Um, but the worst thing you could do is quit. The worst thing you could do is put all your eggs in one, one basket. basket. And then after two months of having all your eggs in one basket and finding out <laughs> your fe fe that she's engaged, <laughs> then all your eggs are broken and you're like, screw this, and like I'm done. Yes, and uh, you're going to start from scratch again. And if you had somebody who could see from a different perspective, mm -hmm. but g getting here and verifying in person, meeting other women here on the ground, having other opportunities, investigating whether it's someplace you want to retire, how to read the tea leaves is one of the biggest challenges that men have. Mm -hmm. You know, when um, having candidates for dating, mm. like you're, you're, you're selecting Filipinas, you're talking online, video chatting with, let's say, for real Filipinas, they are real, but you, because you're juggling, you are selecting. I think, because in my experience, when I am selecting a winner in a contestant, in a singing competition, what I am focused, really, really focused is on the mistake that they're going to do on the little mistake that that they will do in their performance mm. their performance overall will be great but if you are too observant of the mistake that they will possibly do yeah. well, let us say the red flags in the relationship yeah. you will spot it 
right away. Okay. So I think when you're dating and you will be focused on detecting red flags, you can easily get it. I mean, you can easily find it. Yeah. So. But I think so many people are blinded. That's why they send money to get grandma in the hospital, fixed up in the hospital, right? I know. That is why you know, when you start dating online, do not forget about the red flags. You should always think that there must be a red flag. Yeah. And if there's no red flag, then it's um, the high possibility that the person you're talking is real. Hmm. So keep your uh, eagle eye out. Yeah, and always. And try and find a friend that you can bounce this off of. If you don't have a friend, we do consulting and we can uh, give you both a female and a male perspective on your um, Filipina, the types of conversations you're having, the types of prospects, uh, organizing a trip to the Philippines, things like that. You can email us at flymetothephilippines at gmail.com. And we have free PDF that we'll share with you. The one-year plan, it has 70 bullet points in seven major categories. Everything uh, that you need to get organized one year ahead of time. So it's a quick start guide to launch yourself forward and move off the couch and into the airplane seat and on your way to changing your life and meeting a Filipino. Only here from Fly Me to the Philippines. Until next time, make the Philippines dream your dream. See ya.